get ready, grab some popcorn. This is going to be the Hunger Games of all of the products that I bought during my 2020 beauty budget. Hi friends, hi, thank you for watching. My name is Mia and this is my virtual vanity, a place where we both love makeup and we're quite critical of it. And today I want to talk about all of the beauty products that I bought with my 2020 makeup budget. I want to rank them in a tier maker style ranking and I want to give mini reviews of everything and just cast an eye on how 2020 went for me makeup purchase wise, what I learned, what I regretted and hopefully do even bit better in 2021. Before starting, I would like to thank Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. They have a 15% off Valentine's Day sale on their website. Everything is included in the sale. Listen, I love Ana Luisa jewelry. They're very environmentally conscious. They make really quality pieces starting at $39. Dollars. If you've been following for a, me for a while, you may have noticed that, you know, I keep collaborating with them and that's because I truly believe that their stuff is beautiful and unique. All of their pieces are really easy to wear, they're really dainty, they're feminine. What I'm wearing today in the video is this beautiful pareja, I think is pronounced, ring. They made me like rings for some reason, like I never really was into the, you know, stone, satin, gems, whatever else types of rings, but these almost graphic, solid rings that they make are really up my alley. I'm also wearing these beautiful hoop earrings that go with everything. I'm a big fan of smaller earrings because I often have to wear a headset for work. And I also got this opal necklace. Opal is my favorite stone. I would love to be able to translate all of the colors of an opal one day on my eyes, but I don't think I'm quite there yet, but I will make it one day. So yeah, if you're looking for a gift for someone special, for someone in your family, for someone you love like romantically or platonically or all of the other types of love that the Greeks wrote down that there are, or if you just want to treat the most important person in your life, aka you, to someone pretty, I do suggest going to check out their sale. It's going to be linked down below, so yeah, go check out their stuff, I really like it. Without further ado, let's talk about everything that I bought in 2020 and we're going to have the following categories. So the first category is called, eh? like literally this gesture, eh? where I may have liked it, I may have not, but it's for other reasons that you would think there are. There are two products in this category. The first product is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Dim Light. Why it's in the category is because I purchased, purchased this in January, before Hourglass really showed their ass as being the equivalent of that white neighbor you have that said they're totally not racist, but then they follow that up by saying they don't want to associate with those people. They're kind of like that person in the makeup industry. So while I really enjoy the product, every time I use it, I'm left with a bad taste in my mouth because they have proven time and time again that they do not care about catering to their consumers of color to people that are darker than a paper bag and that does not sit well with me. Second product, again, I enjoy the formula and this is the Etude House Play Contour Stick in the variation 03 Natural. Really like this, very smooth, very creamy, very blendable. The problem is that this is not a shade that worked for me. So it's in the uh, category because I see it working on someone else that has a warmer, a bit deeper skin tone, but on me it just looks like dirt because of the undertone differences. And it was a bit expensive too, so I'm pretty upset about that, 
but it is what it is this is what happens when you order online you may get some duds next category is the why did i even buy this category again two products in this category the first one is the dr paw paw tint in peach i bought this thinking it was going to be a bit of a tinted lip balm so something that i would associate more with skincare than makeup something that i would just run over my lips for a bit of hydration for a bit of tint when i didn't want to wear lipstick i was wrong and i have a bone to pick with deme the store that i bought this from because wi-fi never fucking works in their stores so if you want to search for reviews of something that you want to impulse buy tough luck buddy you're not going to find them you're going to have to impulse buy this or bust and i bought this assuming that you know it would be something that it is not this is a proper cream product that you can apply on lips on cheeks on whatever the face on the lips i didn't like it because it caught on all of the dry patches that i had no idea it had it was beautiful on the cheeks although very dewy didn't last long enough very pigmented very very pigmented so i see this working on deeper skin tones as well or at least deeper than me i don't know why did i even buy this it catfished me i thought it was going to be a lip balm it was not i eventually ended up decluttering this despite me liking it because it's very similar to the glossier cloud paint and beam and i would rather focus on panning that rather than to also use this which doesn't last as long and i don't love as much as that other thing I have no idea why I thought that I would like dragging crayons all over my face. I'm a very tactile person, I love applying everything with my hands as long as I can help it. I like applying shimmers with my hands, I like applying cream blush and other cream products with my hands, lip products a lot, I apply them with my hands. I don't understand why I thought that I would like dragging a crayon on my face. Crayons are great for my artwork, for my sketchbooks, they're not that great for my preferred application method. So while the product itself is fine, although the highlighter and the bronzer are sheets that don't quite fit me, I should not have bought this. I should have known better. Third category is the category of I like it, but I'm not in love. You know, those products that you don't mind using them, you even enjoy using them, but when you look at them, they don't spark anything particular in your heart. You're like, yeah, you're nice, you're fine, I like you. So the first one is the Zessie Egyptian, Egyptian Museum Lipstick in 301, which is a pretty nude pink color. It's a very beautiful formula, very creamy, hydrating, relatively long-lasting for a bullet, beautiful shade on me, but it's like, yeah, okay, I like it, that's it. Whereas the red shade I find in the same line I find to be much more unique and it will be higher up in this ranking. Second one is a mascara that again I bought with my budget and that's the L'Oreal Million Volume 5 or whatever. I don't even remember the name. It's in the red tube. I don't even have footage of it because I don't have it anymore. It's gone. Bye. This was an okay mascara. Average length uh capabilities and average volumizing a little bit of curl but it's not something that just blew me away it was yet another drugstore mascara and for how expensive it is i would not repurchase i like other cheaper drugstore mascaras much better such as the catrice rock couture another item in the i like it but i don't love it is the blush that i'm wearing on my cheeks today and this is the nabla lola blush listen beautiful formula beautiful color what prevents me yet from falling in love with it is because it limits me eye look wise i have and lip color wise i have this thing where i need to be matchy matchy matching with my clothes everything on my face either needs to play a color contrast or match if the undertone is not what i wanted it ruins my whole day it ruins my whole aesthetic it's a whole Thing. people have called me crazy over it but you know out of all of the annoying quirks that i could have this is the least offensive one you know what i mean so i like it it's such a beautiful color on me but it forces me to go lighter on my eye application or to find the color that exactly matches it or plays perfectly into that color contrast and same with the lips beautiful beautiful shade but it's a bit limiting and for that i don't quite love it yet 
Another blush in the same category is the APU Juicy Pang blush and this is in the shade Fig. I really like the formula. It's an interesting cream to powder consistency that can be applied with both a brush and fingers. The only problem is that I thought it would look more muted on me. It looks very ruddy. I look like I have been in the sun a lot. It's a very healthy look for me, but it's a particular type of aesthetic that I can only use certain times. It would look out of place on me, for example, in the winter because you would see my ghostly everything else but then that bronzy, corally, ruddy cheek and you would be like, yeah, that kind of, that kind of looks sus, that kind of looks fake. And you know, I'm not a natural girl by any means but I have different aesthetics that I aspire to depending on the seasons. So this for me is a summer warm weather blush. I do feel that if you have a skin tone that is warmer than me or even pulling a little bit olive, this would be a color that flatters you much more in all situations than it does me. More blushes. Like this year, um, I kind of went overboard with the blush. I need to fucking chill. The Etude House Cookie Blushes. These are in Grapefruit Jelly and Pink Brownie. Beautiful formula. This is a very sheer application that K beauty style that is, you know, just like a veil of color on the cheeks. Again, beautiful formula. I think though that I, they're not in the love category because I keep comparing them with the other cookie blusher that I have, and that one is in lavender chiffon cake. That one is so unique and so striking for what it is that. Anything else in the same line compared to it just doesn't match up. And I also had to fiddle a bit around with these. I had to find a different application style than with the puff. With the puff, they kind of look pedestrian. If I apply them with a fluffy brush, it just looks beautiful. As I said, veil of color on the cheeks, very natural, very... It doesn't look like you're wearing blush, that's all I'm saying. Next category is the love it category. Um, and I have quite a few products in there and we're going to start with the Zessi Egyptian Museum palette. Uh, there is some discussion to be had regarding the fact that a Chinese brand is using an ancient Egyptian aesthetic to sell their products but I personally feel this is a case of cultural appreciation not cultural appropriation. If you want to discuss more about it feel free to talk about it in the comments below. Anyway, I really like this palette. This is really nice for both neutral and colorful looks. You have a variety of formulas from sheer glittery shimmer topper type shades to mm, drier mattes to a creamy super shock type of shade to proper opaque shimmers. It's a very versatile pa palette and I also have a review up on everything that I got from Zessi and I'm going to link it down below if you want more details. Again, still from Zessi in the Love It category is their um, Ancient Egypt powder and this is in 01 Ivory. This is a great finely milled, translucent almost powder. I like to use it most in the summer spring when I get just a little bit sweaty. I don't find it to be the perfect winter powder for... Wow! Okay, that was a... Uh... I don't know what he was trying to communicate, but he's now asleep on his bed, so I think we're fine. Anyways, before I was uh, interrupted by Grandpa Cat singing the song of his people, uh, this is a good summer spring powder for me. Not so much winter because I get much drier in the winter and so I need powders that are more lightweight. Zessie 309 lipstick. This is such a beautiful, unexpected color. It's red. But then when I put it on the lips, it has a slight red to yellow, warmer undertone on me. In certain lights, it pulls almost reddish orange, like a blood orange type of color. It's a really unique color that I don't have anything else like it in my collection. And for that, I really, really do love it. Cover FX Sweet Peach Blush Duo. Listen, everyone and their mothers was losing their goddamn minds over this blush. And you know, they were right. The, the, the soap packaging, super cute, super aesthetic. I really like that. It looks great in Instagram pictures and 
By the way, if you'd like to see more of my looks and more of the products that I use, head over to my Instagram because that's where all of the magic happens. Here we're just a little bit more talkative, we're a bit more sassy. On Instagram, there's just pure makeup love and nerdery. Anyways, this is a beautiful, beautiful, healthy peach flush, a beautiful color on me. It's a bit pigmented, so I have to be careful how I apply it. I like applying it with an e.l.f. pointed brush or another brush that has kind of that same egg shape because then I can control how much product I deposit. So the shades are beautiful singular, like applying them separately. They're beautiful all together. I've been really, really enjoying this formula. The only thing that's stopping me from getting more shades is that I kind of have dupes for everything else that I would want from them and I don't want to get unnecessary stuff in my collection. Next up is NYX Gloss in Praline, which is a beautiful nudie brown gloss. Its undertone kind of gets lost on my lips at a certain point. I really need to apply a lot of it so you can see that, you know, praline candy color, but it's really comfortable, really hydrating. My lips feel super, super nice every time I use it. And it's a, it's the kind of color that kind of goes well with everything. I've been really enjoying it. Nabla Side by Side, one of my most recent palette purchases. I actually just finished filming a three looks one palette and a review, and that will be up in a couple of days, I hope. I love this palette so much. It is a very beautiful, complete, neutral palette. It has some, I wouldn't call some duds, but some shades that I don't get that along with. And you'll see that in my review. But truly, this for me is the crowning jewel of 2020 neutral palettes. It's beautiful, it's got so much variety, and it is in a formula that I really, really like. NYX HD primer I bought because of Alex the Alchemist here on YouTube. This is a good primer. I love it, but as time went by, I realized that I don't love it as much as the Milani eye primer. Uh, this has a doe foot applicator and you can't tend to apply too much of it. If you apply too much of it, your shadow will crease. If you apply just enough, it will be foolproof. So it's not in my favorites of all of the year of what I bought because I have to fiddle a bit with it and be careful about the quantity. But it is an excellent primer. Vidya Lumi Layer Primer is a beautiful, luminous primer with a silver to hollow sheen, quite hydrating on the face. Everything sits beautifully on top of the skin. It's something that I bought because of Hannah Louise Poston and I actually have a, a video of YouTube made me buy it 2020. So if you're interested in a full review of this, description box down below is going to be linked right there. It's a really nice primer and I do, do love it. Beauty Bay Pastels palette. I really like this palette and a lot of people are surprised at it because it got trashed. And for good reason, listen, this palette will not work on you if you are darker than a paper bag. But I didn't want to invest in something more expensive because I didn't know how much this pastel kick of mine would go. Figures that I love it. I love the aesthetic, I love the colors. If you combine more than three or so of them together, they will not want to play nice with you. So this is a palette that you can use as a companion palette for a look, that you can use for a two, three shadow look max, nothing more complex or layered than that. But it's perfect for what I want to do with it. I realized that somehow I forgot to mention the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. I think that was because I got hurried by the fact that my battery started dying. Anyway, my opinions on this palette is that it is very pretty. I have a review up on it. It's beautiful. It's not $65 worth of beautiful. I love it, but it's not necessarily my favorite. But every time I use it, I love it. I love the look. I love the shimmers. The mattes are really pretty. They're blendable. More details on my review on it. Now, this is the, the final category. These are my complete favorites. These spark joy on multiple planes. One of my favorite purchases of 2020 were the Forever Lash Creamy Singles. This is a Romanian brand mostly aimed at professional makeup artists, I think. 
and they don't ship internationally so i've avoided talking about them on my channel because it feels like dangling candy in front of a diabetic child like it feels bad to talk about things that that most of my audience isn't able to get if they so desire these are my favorites because they are such an unexpected find they're the first romanian makeup brand that i found I really like their aesthetic. The formula is nice, although it does tend to crease quite quickly than being sort of a cream to powder-ish formula. They just spark joy. They just spark joy. They wouldn't necessarily be my favorite eyeshadow formula in my collection, but just knowing that they are Romanian, just like me, really makes them my favorite. Second favorites, again, more eyeshadow, and we are talking about the Bernovich eyeshadow singles. They are a brand from Belarus, so again, quite close to home, European indie brand. Listen, I fell in love. These are the sparkliest shadows, the side of Europe. I got the, uh, the first batch of singles from Bernovich sometimes mid last year uh, or like later during the year. I made a review. I fell in love. I promptly did another order in December. Merry Christmas to me. And now I have quite a collection of Bernovich singles. These are so beautiful, so sparkly, so multi-dimensional, beautiful, stunning formula. Some of them remind me of the Davina sparklers or the Davina shimmery, you know, glittery type of shadows. I'm really happy that I found an European indie that can satisfy all of my magpie brain needs. I also have a review of on them will be linked down below if you're interested. Uh, we're going to less exciting stuff because it's not as sparkly. The Becca under eye corrector was yet again one of my favorites this year. I have been using it non-stop since I got it every time I do makeup. Even if I don't do makeup and I'm just going outside and I need to not look like a vampire that doesn't get any sleep. I don't need to look like the undead. I just put a little bit of this under my eyes and it makes me look alive. It makes me look like I drink all of the water that I should drink, that I sleep enough and that I am completely zen, which I am not. You know the sound that computer fans make when they're overworked? That's my brain 24 seven. Anyway, that makes me look like I'm a calm, well-rested person. I love it. It's got a bit of a learning curve. You have to apply the tiniest bit of it because it's very emollient. I wouldn't say greasy, but maybe greasy. So you need to apply just a very, very thin layer of it, then concealer on top or leave it as is. Powder it so you don't look like you've got headlights. Two mascaras that I've been really loving were the uh, Milk Kush Mascara and the Kiko Extra Sculpt, which is my new holy grail. Both are lengthening, volumizing, and they also hold the curl beautifully. I've not found one single fault with the Kiko Extra Sculpt. However, I have heard that for some people, the Kush Mascara does flake. This did not happen to me because I am dry. I am a desert. It didn't flake. I loved it. But to be fair, the Kiko Extra Sculpt is a bit less expensive. So I'm gonna keep buying that. And two more Nabla products in this category. Nabla Highlighter in Ozone, which is what I'm wearing on my cheeks today. Beautiful highlighter, beautiful formula. It's very reflective without being shimmery, without being glittery. You can build it up. You can create a more natural look and you, or you can be seen from space like I am over here. Goes well with every look. I really think that they outdid themselves with this highlighter release. Um, I also bought the Nabla bronzer in Dune. Again, the bronzer that I am wearing today looks kind of scary swatched, but actually when you blend it out, it makes me look alive. It makes me look like I get some sun. Beautiful formula. It blends itself sheer, but it can be built up, built up and intensified depending on needs. Last but not least, Patrick Tashi's Passionate Blush. I had been lusting after these blushes ever since they were released because of the luxe, rich bitch aesthetic that they have. That is a beautiful pinky flush on me. Kind of goes with everything because it's a bit more um, 
muted than Lola, for example, but it, you can still clearly tell that my, my cheeks are rosy and flushed and beautiful. I really like the formula, I really like the presentation, the packaging, I love it. It makes me feel fancy. And these were it. These were all of the products that I bought in 2020 with my beauty budget. I hope I didn't forget one. Let's hope not. Anyway, th that was the makeup. Please don't forget about Ana Luisa's 15% off for Valentine's Day. Link and code down below if you want to use that. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have a wonderful morning, evening, second breakfast, third lunch, or whatever it is you're from. Bye!